In the recent April update of Home Assistant, a bunch of new input helpers were added that allow you to work with and transform your data in even more ways than were possible before. So let's go over and show you how they work. After a word from our sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay are a one-stop shop for all of your electronic project needs, offering high quality PCB printing services, CNC, 3D printing, injection molding, sheet metal fabrication, and everything else you need to make your DIY project become a reality. Check them out with the link in the video description. To find all of these helpers that we are going to talk about today, head over to configuration, automations, and then click on the helpers tab, and then add a new helper, where you will see a list of all of the available helpers, including the ones that we are just about to talk about. The first new input helper that was added is called the derivative, which you've probably heard used before in maths. Now, I'm no mathematician, that stuff goes way over my head, but essentially the derivative helper allows you to work out the rate of change of a value or sensor. This might be useful for tracking values where you aren't, necessarily concerned with the actual current value, but rather you want to see how much it's changed over a given time period. Some practical examples of this could be to track gas or energy consumption over an hour, maybe temperature or humidity in a room, or even how much water has flown through a sensor. This could then allow you to run automations based on this value. One that I could think of is for tracking how much energy your solar panels are producing and when you start seeing a large change in energy production, maybe that indicates that it is a good time to start charging your car, which kicks off an automation to do so. Or another one is perhaps you start seeing a rapid rise in humidity in your bathroom, then start the extractor fan to start bringing that humidity back down. Next up, we have the Riemann sum integration. Now, some of you may remember this from when we talked about it way back when Home Assistant Energy was first released. But as a refresher, the Riemann sum integration is a way of approximating the area underneath the curve on a graph. Now, again, way over my head, but speaking about Home Assistant specifically, this is a great way of getting your energy usage into Home Assistant if you have plugs and devices that are not in the correct format. So for example, say you have a smart plug with energy monitoring, but the data that it provides is measured in watts. But energy companies and therefore Home Assistant expect energy to be provided in kilowatt hours instead of watts. The Riemann sum integration can help you to track energy usage for those devices that give you their power in watts. Take this smart plug for example, which gives me my washing machine's power consumption in watts. By using the Riemann sum integration, I can quickly and easily work out the energy usage, which gives you a value in kilowatt hours, which I can then add to my Home Assistant energy dashboard to start producing energy consumption graphs. There are other uses for the Riemann sum integration, but that is the way that I see most people using it. The next one is hopefully pretty self-explanatory, the Min Max Helper. This allows you to create a sensor that will track one of either the minimum, maximum, mean, median, or most recently updated. The cool thing is that it's not limited to one sensor. You can add a bunch of sensors in here and have it pull out the max value of all of those sensors together, or track the median or whatever you want. Useful for maybe if you want to track the average temperature throughout your house of all of your rooms or something similar. This is a really great one to have. Threshold is the next one on our list. And you can think of threshold like a fancy binary sensor that will turn on or off whenever a threshold is crossed. Maybe you could have a threshold sensor for air quality Whenever air quality in a room gets to a certain value and crosses a threshold, the binary sensor turns on and then we can receive a notification to tell you to open a window. The threshold sensor has both upper and lower limits, allowing you to control the behavior to suit your needs and is a really nice, simple way of getting a straight yes or no answer from a sensor to indicate something of importance has happened. And this could also be used for other things like humidity, temperature, power, CPU utilization, error rate, and a bunch of other metrics. Next, we have the time of day helper. And like the threshold sensor, it is also a binary sensor that will turn on if the current time is between two set values. This is great for creating, just like the name suggests, 
times of day where you want things to happen. For example, you may create a time of day sensor for morning, afternoon and evening so that you can create more tailored and custom text to speech messages. Or perhaps create a morning mode between two times so that you can run a wake up routine with a morning announcement. This could also be useful for activating different scenes automatically depending on what time of day it is. Yes, you could do all of these things before, but I think this makes it much easier and more obvious to beginners getting started to have a helper that does this instead. Our final helper is one that lots of you were asking about, the utility meter. The utility meter helper allows you to create a sensor that will track utility bills such as energy, gas, water or heating. The cool thing about the utility meter is that you can have it reset on a configured cycle to follow your normal billing cycle. You can also configure and set different tariffs for if you have a utility bill that changes price depending on the time of day. And if you configure it to reset the cycle on say, for example, a monthly basis, it will automatically keep the previous month's value in the sensor's attributes so that you can compare month to month to see how much you are using. This one will be key for a lot of you out there who like to track energy usage. So there we go, that is all of the new input helpers available in Home Assistant as of the April release. All of these have actually been available as integrations for quite a long time previously, but they were all done in configuration and now they are available in the UI, making them much more accessible for more people to use. But let me know in the comments which one you find the most useful and what you are planning on using it for. If you're looking for something else to watch, then check out this video over here where we talked about how I personally use some of the original input helpers in my home assistant for creating morning routines, guest modes, and a few other scenarios. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure to drop it a like and get subscribed, and I will see you in the next video.